Shalom, Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right. I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Can't eat that. Oh, shrimp? Nah, don't do that. Oh. Go ahead. What you got? Oh, oh, oh. Is it about to be a reason to not keep the commandments? No, it's not a reason, but it is, it is, it is, I'm coming straight from the Bible. Okay, let's go. The Lord say anything you pour, you put in your mouth, you must bless it. So why he say don't eat pork if you blessing your food? Okay. Oh, he said that. He said that. Yes, sir. Okay, then. So I don't, I mean, y'all, y'all talk about this, talk about that, but you ain't getting down to the black tax. You can make that Bible say anything you want to make it say. Okay. But the truth. So we're going to go to the scripture you call. Yeah. Right? That's all we call. Okay. Give me first okay. Timothy chapter okay. 4, verse First Timothy chapter four. Because a lot of the things we've said, you know, anything, but I know about the cross. He don't want nobody to remember wearing no crosses because that's a sign of his death. He ain't died. Right. You know what I'm saying? So he don't want nobody to remember that. That's in the Bible too. It is. So a lot of the things we've been taught about this Bible have been taught with the wrong understanding. Because for years we had this Bible and did not know that we were God's chosen people. Right. You understand? Revelation chapter 21, verse 14. Uh -huh. And the wall of the city. 21, verse 14. Oh, 22, 14. I'm sorry. Deuteronomy, I mean, Revelation chapter 22, verse 14. Come on. Blessed are they that do his commandments. So what makes you blessed? The day you do his commandments. Doing his commandments. So if it's something that goes against his commandments, can you bless it? It's not against his commandment, because it was written. Okay, now, First give me Job 14, 4. Taking me, you taking me where I, where I, where I really don't want to go. What's See, because the Bible, the Bible, the Bible is more than somebody spoke. You, you, get, the, you get the Tanakh, you get the Tanakh, you know what I'm saying? The Which Israel is the Bible, that's right, that's right. But see, the whole Bible says something different from what the, the, no, the, the that's total of the Tanakh. Completely untrue, completely untrue. Because what you just said is the Tanakh is just another word for prophets. That's like uh, Torah. It's just another word for Old Testament. Bring it out. That's all. That's just the Bible. Right. You understand? Read that. Job chapter 14 verse 4. Uh -huh. Bring it up. Who can bring a clean thing? So who can bring a clean thing? Who can bless something? Read. Out of an unclean. Out of something that God said is not clean. Now, give me Leviticus. Chapter 11, uh, verse, what was it? 46. Leviticus chapter 11, verse 46. Uh -huh. This is the law of the beast. This is the law of the animals. Read. And of the fowl. Uh -huh. And of every living creature uh -huh. that moving in the water. So from the seafood to the land animals. That cover your pigs. That cover your horses. That cover your shrimp, your crab, your lobsters. All that, right? Read. And of every creature that creepeth upon the earth to do what to make a difference between the clean and the unclean so you got a difference between your clean animals and your unclean animals right, right. so if it's an unclean animal can you now bless it and make it clean yes i can go back to Job 14 Job 14 Job 14 14 because maurice i want you to i want you to be on the same level let me say it same level okay Show me somebody here without sin. Show me someone without sin. Okay, a better question would be, like, show me somebody who learned what sin is and then continue to do it. Okay. That's a better question. That's because right. at one point, we all didn't know. Right. But the question is, once you learn it, are you going to be prideful and say, no, I'm going to keep doing what I want to do? Teach. Hey, real quick, get Romans 2 and 12. Because what you just said, what's your name again? Maurice? I'm Solomon. How you doing, sister? What the brother was going over, right, was solutions to the community, right? That's what we need, right? We don't need more problems. The problem is the sin, right? right? So if we ain't going to continue in sin and say, well, damn, who, 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 ain't, who ain't sin? It's not a, we ought to fall, fall short like the Christian church say, right? We don't fell short of the glory of God. That's right. But guess what? There's a difference between a man who is going to continue to get up and strive to keep the commandments of God. You see what I'm saying? It's a difference. If I say willfully, you know what? It's the Sabbath day, but you know what, man? 
Bro, be out there selling them hot plates on the Sabbath, and they be good as hell, man. I'm going to go by and get me one of them things, man. That's what we do as black folks. That's what the Christian church has taught us to do. Read that. Romans chapter 2, verse 12. Out, For as many as have sinned without the law, uh -huh. shall also perish without the law. You see that? It says, For as many have sinned without the law. Guess what? They still got to be judged. That's right. They, the judgment is still there. Guess what? The law gives us all a space and an opportunity to repent. But it's up to us to take that leap of faith and say, you know what? Lord, I'm going to follow you. Because the problem has been in our community that we have been deciding to follow after the so-called white man instead. Right. Christmas, Thanksgiving, Easter, ain't none of that in the Bible. We ain't never had a problem with that. I guarantee Maurice ain't never walked up in a Christmas party like, why y'all doing this? Why the church doing this? You see what I'm saying? We, we don't do those things, and we know that these things is lies. Right. A lot of us, we know we go to church every Sunday, and we know the damn Christian church is a lie. Right. right. But we do what? We go there to feel good. Give me that in uh, Isaiah 29 and 13. That's what church is. Church is a feel-good session. We love to just feel good, especially when you done did some wrong. If I'm a damn adulterer and I done slept with five different women, I want the pastor to tell me that I'm straight. I'm good. How you doing, my brother? That's what the church has taught us, to, to be in our sin and to stay in our sin. But God said that, guess what? There's going to be a judgment for that. But read that. Isaiah chapter 29, verse 13. Come on. Wherefore the Lord said, for as much as this people draw near me with their mouth. It says, God's people draw near him with their mouths. That's us. Because if I was to ask all of y'all, y'all love God? Yes, and you love God? Yeah, we all going to say that, right? And I ain't just saying y'all. I'm just using y'all as an example because y'all are here. But if I ask 10 out of 10 people, do you love God? What they going to say? They going to say, yeah, right? Ain't nobody going to be like, no. Read. And with their lips, do honor me. We honor God with our mouths, right? That's like, you married? You married? You married, you married my brother? You look too young to be married. How are you? <laughs> Oh, okay, yeah, you shouldn't be married. <laughs> you ain't that? Okay, okay. Bob's like, boy, you better not be, boy. <laughs> no, but, okay, so when you're married, right, and your spouse tells you I love you, and I would imagine if you married, you would have already figured this out, but doesn't there have to be action behind that? There has to be action. If I just tell you, girl, I love you, girl, that's what we did in the world when we was players and pimps, right? Girl, I love you. You go sleep with the next one. Girl, I love you. Then the next one. Girl, I love you. You done told 10 girls you love them already. But is that true love? So God is the same way. God said, listen, all y'all say y'all love me, but read. But have removed their heart far from me. Uh -huh. And their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. God says that we've removed our minds from him. That's what your heart is. Not talking about this thing that pump blood. It's talking about we've removed our minds from God. And it says our fear towards God has been taught to us by the precepts of men. What man on this earth taught us how to fear God? What nation of people? Because that's, that's what he's talking about. Who taught us about God? The white man. The white man. Is he lying? Is he lying? That's the truth, right? We learned Christianity from what? We learn white Jesus from what? From slavery. From slavery. But guess who did this to us? Guess who told us that this was going to happen because of our disobedience? We're going to go back. Go get Deuteronomy 28. All of this is in the Bible. Our history is in the Bible, y'all. But the churches have not been teaching us who we are. And that's the most important thing that we need to know as a people. If you don't know who you are and you don't know your history, how are you going to know where you're going? How you going to know that? That's why we, it's so easy for us to fall into whatever trap they set for us. Bring it out. That's why we'll celebrate Christmas uh, by uh, second nature and not even think about it. Thanksgiving, second nature, not even think about it. Because it's been embedded into us because our whole system has been wiped clean. Right. It's like if when you go into reset a computer or whatever the case may be or get rid of a virus, you wipe the whole thing clean. And what you do, you reprogram it. That's what happened to us as black folks. We've been white clean of our history, and the white man done pro. We we walk in white folks. You see that on it on it on the uh, outside, 
We black, but on the inside, we white folks. We think and operate like white people. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. Uh-huh. But it verse uh jump to verse uh 48. Verse 48. I want y'all to listen to this because this ain't never been read to us, y'all. This is Bible history. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 48. Come on. Therefore, shalt thou serve thine enemy. So one of the curses that would fall upon the children of Israel, and this what I'm doing is showing y'all how we know that we the real Jews. How I know that we the Israelites. I'm about to prove to you that we know that we are these people. God says, therefore, right? So thou serve thine enemy. God says one of the curses that will fall upon the children of Israel is that you would serve your enemies. When did that happen to us? Right here. This is things that they try to... Do they teach y'all about this in school? They teach you about this in school? Slavery. You see that? They ain't even teaching it in the school system no more. They don't want you to know your history. Now, if I bring up slavery to the youth, they're like, what the hell are you talking about? What you talking about? I ain't never heard about slavery. Now it's the uh, the great migration and all of this. Read. Which the Lord shall send against thee. God says, you're going to serve your enemies. Who did it say sent them against us, my brother? Who, who, did, who did it just say sent our enemies against us? My brother right here with the striped polo. Say what now? Who did it say sent our enemies I'm, against us? I'm, I'm, I'm here, but I'm actually looking at, think about, I got some other stuff going on in my head right now. Okay, okay, just follow me for a second if you can, right? Because I want to make sure that you get this concept in your mind, right? So, read that one more time. Therefore, shall thou serve thine enemies, uh -huh. which the Lord shall send against thee. Were you able to capture it that time? Okay, so he said, therefore... One of the curses was that we was going to serve our enemies. And it said that the Lord was going to send them against us. Meaning, guess who did this to us? Guess who sent the white man against us? The Most High God did that. He said, I'm going to send your enemies against you. Now, let's just say it's not us. Let's just say that ain't what I'm trying to say it is. What is it saying? Because God says that he's going to send a group of enemies against another group of people. Right? If that doesn't uh, nail it in a coffin, let's read on. In hunger. In hunger. Who did we have to serve in hunger? When we was hungry, who did we have to serve in order to eat? Huh? White, the white man. Don't we still serve him today? Some of y'all just came out of Family Dollar. We go to Walmart. We go to Publix. We go to Kroger. Whole Foods. Right? All of these places, Piggly Wiggly, all of these places, who owns the mass majority of the groceries that come within America, the, the stores? Who own them? Is it us? Nah, that's just a fact. We don't own them. Sam's Club, all of this stuff, these are Caucasian people who own the food that you intake into your households. You don't have a choice. All you get to do is select from what they give you. If the white man was to go and put nothing but pork in the stores, guess what? That's what you're going to consume. But it should not be that way. This is a curse that God said would be upon us for being disobedient to him. God says, you ain't want to serve me. Guess what? I'm going to make you serve your enemies. Read. And hunger. Uh -huh. And in thirst. In thirst. The water that we consume. We don't know where the hell they're really getting the water from. They might say bottled in the Alps, taken from this spring taken from that spring. But do we really know? No, because we don't control it. It ain't not one black water company that I can go to on, on a mass level and go in every store and see my people's water. A lot of times, if that is the case, guess who got their hand into it? The so-called white man had to come in and give them the, okay, we're going to fund this opportunity right here, whatever the case may be. And that's what happened. In a lot of our communities, we'll have a business and we are um, the only time we able to grow is when the white man step in and say, you know what, we're going to make this thing a franchise. We're going to put one here, 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 here. But guess what? They come in, they take their piece of the pie. You see what I'm saying? They take their piece of the pie. Read. And in nakedness uh -huh. and in want of all things. It said in nakedness and in want of all things. Because that Ralph Lauren Polo, is that owned by our people? Is Polo owned by us? 
Huh? Is it? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to have a dialogue with you. I'm not asking to be... No, no, I'm just saying, just go ahead, because you said that, you said about the grocery store and everything. What are you shocked? I'm glad you said that. That's, a, That's what I was saying. Okay. No, no. That's why we can have a dialogue. I want you to be that real. I want you to ask the tough questions, because for far too long, we haven't asked them in church. That's right. In church, the pastor up there talking, boom, 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 and guess what? You don't get to say nothing. If you disrupt it, you got, you, they going to kick you the hell off. We here to dialogue with our people. We want to know what's on you because guess what? We had questions too when we came in. So now you made a good point. You said, well, where the hell do you shop at? Right? I shop the same places you shop. You know the difference between me and you? Right now, in this state that we in, you know the difference? The difference is that I understand that I'm in captivity. I understand why these things are going on. I'm not telling you don't go get food and provide for your family. I have a business. I do, I do business with the other nations. You see what I'm saying? But guess what I understand? I understand that these people are not my friends. I understand that when they give me that money, I have to take that money and I have to do something to help my community. Many of us don't grow up with that mentality. When we grow up, we say, I'm going to get rich and I'm going to stun on this nigga right here. That's what we do, right? I know it ain't you, it might not be you, but I'm talking about the mindset of our people. You know what I'm saying? Because some of our people genuinely, genuinely love our people. Some of our people, they have a genuine love for the community. But the majority of our people, the mindset that has been given to us is a mindset of me, 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 me. Even in church you hear, I'm saved, sanctified, I'm this, I'm that, I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. Well, what about we as a people? So what I'm showing you, I'm not showing you what's in the Bible to make you stay in this condition. I'm showing you the history so you know what you got to do moving forward. Because God is such a terrible God that he did this to us. God is not all loving all the time. They call God a great and terrible God. The nations feared the most high God. Our forefathers feared the most high God. Until what? We decided to rebel against him. So that's what I'm showing you. I'm showing you the proof of this happening to us in slavery. But read on. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. So now it said that same enemy that you would serve in hunger, thirst, and in want of all things, right? So even if you want a house, if you want a car, if you want a job, many of us, we have to taint our ways to appease the other nations in order to get the things that we, have, we acquire, right? That's what we do. So for instance, if I want to go to school and get my education, I have to go to these institutions and I have to get what's called a student loan. That student loan now is going to put me in debt because I want to get an education. Okay, let's say everybody got to do that. But when you look at our community, I know a lot of people that graduated college from my community and a lot of them don't get the same opportunities that somebody from the other nation would. I, I'll give you an example. In corporate America, a lot of times the IT department is usually majorly, do you, would you be able to guess? Would you be able to guess? Yes, I'm not Who would you guess? I would guess Caucasians. Huh? Caucasians. Okay, Caucasians. Or also the Arabs, right? Now, you would say that we would have the same opportunity, but a lot of times they have programs and systems set up for these people to already be successful when we come through school there's not a lot of programs for us to be successful for instance when you look at the chinese community the how they get these beauty supply stores and all guess what they have loans specifically for them that help them in business american deli all of this stuff they're owned by the chinese community they come into how many how many of these stores right these beauty supply stores, do you see in the Caucasian communities? You don't see many of them. You know why? Because they have a, they have figured out a way how to get a dollar out of us. The money they give us go right back to them. That's why they don't mind giving us the money now. Give these niggas the money. They done flipped the script on us now. Before it was like we was broke, impoverished, all of this stuff. Now, even in Atlanta, there's a lot of wealthy people in Atlanta. Right?
But where that money going to? We we get the wealth all to go spend it on. I want the Gucci belt. I want this. Rather than saying, you know what? My people don't have nothing. Let's build our own. Let's let's try to now that we keeping God's commandments. Let's cause go get Joshua one and eight. Cause this is what happens when we keep God's commandments. When we keep God's commandments, the Lord says our way is gonna be prosperous. We're gonna be able to come into business with one another. Read that real quick. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, uh -huh. but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. So God commanded us that this book of the law, meaning the Bible, should not depart from us. We're supposed to be keeping God's commandments. With that being your son, what you expect him to do while he's living up under your roof? What I said. Right. And it's, it's that way or what? He got to go, right? God, why do we think God is any different that he just going to, many times we'll say, listen, um, we'll tell a brother, hey, stop smoking cigarettes. Man, you can't judge me. You know what I'm saying? Only God can judge me. But God already said, don't defile your temple. Right. He already put the instructions there. Now me as your brother, I'm trying to, listen, get it right before daddy get home. Stop doing that. But you tell me, hey man, you can't judge me. Now daddy get home and now you get judged. And now it's like, why wait for the judgment of God to get right? You know what I'm saying? But that's many of our people. How you doing, my brother? So God says, listen, the law should not depart from you. Read. That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. Come on. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. It says, then. First, we got to keep the commandments, and it says then God is going to make our ways prosperous. Because can you go into business with a rapist? Can you go into business with a thief? Can you go into business with a murderer? No, you can't, right? We can't do these things. Why? Because mentally, we have to be on one accord. That one accord, you know why I can say, okay, this brother, after I, I vet this brother, right, and I prove a friend, I can say, you know what, brother, let's start a business together. Because I under, he understands the same commandments that I understand. Right. And now, when we have issues, the scriptures say, Matthew 18, you got to go talk to your brother. Right. right? So now, I go deal with my brother one-on-one. -on -one. We both have this understanding. But if my man right here, if he got the, the mindset of, I'm a robber, you know what I'm saying? I, that's all I do is I rob. And we talking about business. I can't do business with him. He might go rob the family dollar, come back and bring the money to our business, and now guess what? We both get bammed up. He say, hey, bro, you know, the Lord blessed us his 10000 for you. You take that money, you go what? You pay your rent or pay your mortgage, you pay your car, no, all of this stuff. And now what? Now you in a situation all because a brother, I'm not saying you. <laughs> Yo, you good, man, you good. You good. But what I'm saying is, that, that mentality, if we're not on the same page, it will ultimately destroy us. And that's why you see the community the way it is. Because get Amos 3. That's why the community is the way it is. So what we're teaching is that the so-called blacks, the Hispanics, and natives, we are the real Jews that the Bible speak of. That's right. We came here on cargo slave ship, and it was prophesied from God for that to happen. Read that. Amos chapter 3, verse 3. Came to... Walk together except they be agreed. Two can't walk together except they be agreed, right? We can't we can't go into business with each other if me and you not on one accord. For instance, the Bible says that on a Sabbath day, we're not supposed to buy, sell, we're not supposed to cook, we're not supposed to do none of that stuff on a Sabbath day. Right. If I go into business with you, you gotta understand that. Because that's the only way our business is gonna be prosperous. If we breaking God's commandments all to get a dollar, uh, all to get a dollar, that's what the Bible called being covetous. Hold that, get uh, Jeremiah, because we coming right back. Jeremiah six and thirteen. That's called being covetous, and that's what many of our people are today. We covet after the things of the world. We covet after these things, right? We all want to. We want to drive a nice car. We want to put our families in a nice house. We want to do it. And there's nothing wrong with that. Don't get me wrong. But you should not get to the point where you're breaking God's commandments to attain this stuff. Right. Read. Jeremiah chapter 6 verse 13. For from the least of them, even unto the greatest of them, uh -huh. everyone is given to covetousness. It says every one of us is given to covetousness. Because if you don't constantly check that spirit on a daily basis, especially in this lifetime, 
Right? Because if you turn on your television, what you going to see? You going to see everything you could possibly want. If you go turn on social media, right? Our people are a lot more covetous now because we have so many things that are access. I'm not saying that because you look like an elder, elder gentleman, right? I'm not saying these things wasn't going on during his time period, right? You still have brothers who was covetous or whatever the case may be because even during the crack era, Right? Stuff like that. Many of our people found a way. Crack made our people millionaires. Right. But it also did what? Huh? It also destroyed a lot of our people. You see what I'm saying? So I'll destroy my community all because of a dollar. That's called being covetous. Now I now I gotta look I, I sold your mama drugs. Now I gotta look at the, the problems that you're dealing with with your mama. She on crack, she your mama on the street and all of this stuff, and I'm we supposed to be brothers. Right, right. But all because of my covetous spirit, I say, nah, I gotta take care of mine. It goes back to what we were saying earlier about that I I I spirit, that me, me, me. It's all about me. Black folks have yet to learn how to think about us as a people. Go back to Amos. I'm gonna show you something. Because there's a reason why these things specifically are happening to us in our community. Read that. Amos chapter three, verse one. Uh -huh. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel. O children of who? Of Israel. So God is, God is talking to the Israelites, the people on that sign. Read. Against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt. Saying, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. God says he only dealing with us. We didn't know that growing up. I guarantee... I, does God love everybody? God love everybody? Yeah. Okay. When do we learn that at? Be okay, this is the reason I ask that, right? Because when you look at the world, right, there's never been a time where there's been equality. Never. It's always been a ruling class of people, right? And there's always been robbery, theft, pillage, uh, rape, all of these things where people take over What is a nation? Nation is family Nation is community Nation is men leading by example Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is 